Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and we love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. In today's Q&A video, we're gonna be talking about travel tips. Thank you for all your comments and questions that you guys have posted on our YouTube channel. After reading them all and answering as many as possible, I've selected five that we're gonna feature in today's Q&A video. Each of these individuals I have selected will receive a complimentary pair of our Wellington shoelaces as a token of our appreciation for their participation in our channel. And if you enjoyed this video or are interested in any of the products that we discussed, please visit our website, hangerproject.com, where we've curated the finest collection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care accessories in the world, as well as other products for the well-dressed. Our first question today is from AJ, and it reads, should shoe trees be used during travel? Uh, AJ, it's a great question, uh, and the short answer is absolutely yes. You always wanna travel with your shoe trees. First and foremost, you wanna use the shoe trees to protect the shape of the shoes and prevent them from being crushed by anything that's being placed inside your luggage. And secondly, I normally pack the shoe trees uh, for the shoes that I'm wearing uh, so that I can use those shoe trees at the end of the day to help restore the shape of my shoes as they dry overnight. As you walk in a pair of shoes, and especially whenever you're traveling, because I normally walk much more while traveling than I do whenever I'm at the office, you perspire and the leather of a really beautiful pair of leather shoes is going to absorb that perspiration and soften. That's why it's important to use the shoe trees uh, to keep the shape of the shoes so that as that leather dries, that natural straight shape of the shoe trees is maintained. Now traveling with shoe trees can be um, burdensome because of the weight. And that's why here at The Hanger Project, uh, we do have a pair of travel shoe trees that are made out of plastic. Now, I wouldn't recommend using plastic shoe trees daily because plastic uh, especially isn't going to allow the shoe trees to breathe as easily as a naturally wooden pair of shoe trees. Uh, but you'll see these shoe trees are hollow, uh, so they are gonna help at least maximize the available breathing. Uh, and the nice thing is, is that they're not gonna really weigh down your luggage. Now, if you're using a pair of our ultra shoe trees, they're relatively light, uh, but if you have a more fully lasted heavy shoe tree, you know, two or three of those in a pair of luggage uh, and can really add significant weight. So if that's the case, and if you're not traveling with bespoke shoe trees, uh, then I would absolutely recommend investing in one or two pairs of our travel shoe trees. Our second question today is from Mr. Joey Zaza, and it's on our closet organization, tips and tricks Q&A number 27. And it reads, I have ties that are classic patterns and some are 25 plus years old and have been hanging the entire time, no stretch at all. Even the two wool ties I own, go great with flannel trousers, are in great shape. That being said, rolling ties for travel is the way to go. So thank you for your comment. Uh, and absolutely, hanging ties long-term uh, during storage it should be fine. You know, the strong interlining should prevent any type of stretching. It's really not something that I would worry about. You know, even on a unlined tie, uh, the structure of the tie itself should prevent any type of uh, disfiguration while hanging. Now that said, uh, there's many people I know that actually prefer to roll their ties during storage. I have some friends that have nice little boxes. You know, we've got several that we sell here you know, that you could use to roll your ties uh, and place them in a sock drawer or something. All of it really depends on how much space you have inside your closet. Uh, I prefer to hang my ties uh, first and foremost uh, because whenever I go into my closet, you know, I enjoy just kind of being around all my clothes and being able to look and see it and enjoy it. So there in the morning, whenever I'm getting ready, you know, I'll sit down, I'll put on my socks, you know, I'll start to get dressed in the morning and I can look at my ties as they're hanging and really see that everything's available to me. So for that reason, you know, our uh, cedar tie organizer and cedar tie uh, hangers that we sell here at the Hanger project are perfect for hanging your ties. Now, to your point about some ties being, you know, 25 plus years old, I mean, that's one of the things that I really enjoy about investing in a high quality tie that's well made, you know, that's beautiful with the classic pattern, is that you could literally keep it for 25 plus years. Uh, and this tie right here, uh, which you'll see was used to model our uh, favorite, or at least my favorite, a sovereign grade basket weave tie, was a gift from a friend of mine. Uh, it's an old Countess Mara tie. This thing is easily 25 years old. Uh, it was given to me as a gift by a dear close friend. And I loved this tie so much uh, that I wanted to actually have it rewoven so that I could offer it to all of you. 
Uh, and this, without question, is probably the best-selling tie that we have here on Kirby Allison Hanger Project. This sovereign grade tie is woven especially for us in England uh, and has just been restocked. We've got 25 of these things that have just landed. So if you've been waiting for this tie, it's back in stock and available for you now. Uh, and this is a perfect personification of a classic tie. You could wear it with almost anything. Uh, it's black and silver color and uh, makes it a beautiful formal tie with a dark suit like what I'm wearing today. Uh, it looks absolutely stunning, and it's a tie that I never travel without. So good quality ties can really go to the distance, and uh, that's why all of our sovereign grade ties are made to the highest standards. Now regarding your travel tip for rolling ties, I mean, rolling ties is a great way to do it, um, you for sure. Uh, I actually prefer to fold my ties and place them in between shirts, um, you know, the shirts uh, are going to ensure that I don't have to worry about any damage to my tie. Uh, you know, that's personal preference. Uh, I don't roll them just because then, you know, they are going to be pressed flat at multiple points. You know, whereas if I'm folding it, you know, I know that only at two points that are otherwise uh, unnoticeable whenever you're actually wearing the tie is the tie folded, otherwise it's perfectly flat. And as you can see on my video on how to pack for travel, I'll lay my ties flat uh, in between a layer of shirts and then fold the shirts over them in order to provide protection. If you haven't seen our video on how to pack luggage, check it out. There's some interesting travel tips that I share that I've acquired over the years. Our third question today is from Scott McIlwain, and it reads, uh, when I travel, I actually take my shoes as carry-on luggage. Then I know that they're being treated uh, properly on the flight. So, uh, Scott, I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, and it's actually for this reason that whenever I'm checking luggage, I'll normally bring some of my most expensive items like shoes and suits on the flight with me because, God forbid, uh, if the airline were to ever completely lose my luggage and all my clothes were lost with it, I couldn't even fathom uh, the financial loss to me. So as many of you know, uh, I actually use an overnight bag in lieu of a briefcase. And what I like about that is it still fits under the seat in front of me, but it gives me the extra room so that I can pack one or two shoes uh, into my carry-on bag. Now, if I'm taking a roller board, I'll put my shoes in the roller board. Um, but if I'm even checking luggage, I still prefer to carry on uh, my shoes, especially my better shoes like my bespoke ones. And so I'll take one hanger, uh, I'll put you know two jackets on top of that hanger, maybe a few pair of trousers. So whenever I'm going through the gate, even if I have my roller board, uh, my briefcase or my overnight bag, uh, and my travel garment bag, it's technically three pieces, it's over the allowable limit if they hassle me or give me any trouble. Again, because I've got that extra room in the overnight bag that I use for my briefcase, I can take my garment bag and stuff it in there uh, to get through uh, the gate onto the airplane and then I can take it out. And at that point, you know, I'll put my roller board in the overhead bin and then the garment bag just lies perfectly right on top of the roller board and in between the top of the bin. Fits perfectly, I've never had a problem with it. So uh, I absolutely support you know, bringing your finer items onto the airplane, jewelry, watches, uh, your shoes, your suits, uh, anything that you can really uh, carry on and that you would be devastated if you lost, absolutely don't check that onto the airplane. Our fourth question today is from Big Wave 2003, and this again is on our traveling tips, how to pack a suitcase. And it reads, nobody needs three cans of shoe polish on a two-week trip. Also, I believe packing cubes would make this a lot more organized and easier to access. Double bag shoes, but leave silk ties out in the open. So, um, <laughs> you know, a great question. I mean, so absolutely, uh, sometimes I probably travel with more things than I should, but really that's a product of having traveled without those items and then being left, uh, you know, wanting to actually have taken them. So in some ways you're right. You know, if I'm traveling to London or something and I'm just taking black shoes with me, then I'll only bring maybe a tin of black wax shoe polish. I mean, you can get by without a cream uh, just for travel, uh, but I do like to bring some mirror gloss also. So, you know, it just kind of goes to your personal preferences. Of course, shoes are really important to me. So whenever I'm traveling for a prolonged period of time, I want to ensure that I've got everything with me that I need to take care of those shoes. And so at a minimum, it's at least one tin of wax polish. You can get by with the neutral if you've got black and brown uh, or just a black pigmented wax polish uh, if all you're taking black shoes but 
you know, why not take a cream with you also, or maybe even a mirror glass? It's only gonna help you better take care of your shoes. Now, of course, all that's a function of room, and depending on how much I'm packing, for how long I'm gone, uh, and where I'm going, will really determine how much I take with me. But if I've got the room, I absolutely take that with me. Now, some other things that I always take with me and that I never leave without uh, is one of our shoe shine brushes. This is our medium horsehair shoe shine brush. So important because, again, if you're using high quality wax polishes like this Fear wax polish, oftentimes all you need to do is just buff the shoes. So, a horsehair brush is very handy. If you get stuck in a little bit of rain, again, buffing that out really helps. If your shoes get dirty or at the end of the day, Buffing your shoes is a, such great practice for really keeping them uh, looking good and clean without having to polish them. Now, I also travel with a travel shoehorn, which is an essential. And another thing that I never travel without uh, is a pair of extra shoelaces because again, I can't tell you the number of times I've been on a trip, I'm getting ready in the morning and I actually snap a pair of shoelaces. An extra set of shoelaces should honestly be uh, an everyday carry item that you have in your briefcase and every set of luggage. It's just something that is always with my luggage. I actually keep it in my toiletry bag. Uh, and then the shoe bags, yes, I mean, you know, we spoke about double bagging. Uh, I absolutely always double bag. I mean, it takes no extra effort and really goes such a long way to protecting your shoes. Uh, we just came out with our new Wellington uh, travel shoe bags. We recently changed this to be out of a black fabric because you don't have to worry about any linting on black shoelaces. So uh, this is actually a, a big uh, improvement to these bags and uh, we're happy to be carrying this exclusively now. And then there was one other item. Ah, that's right. So regarding ties, I mean, of course you can roll your ties. Uh, I fold mine, but I don't leave them out in the open because as you'll see in the video, I actually put them in between shirts and then I fold the shirts over them. So I don't have to worry about any snagging uh, on my ties at all. Our last question today is from Swiss Gator, and it reads, and I give my wife a hard time for not packing lightly. Seriously, for six days of travel, three dress shirts with three different ties, two suits, two pairs of shoes should suffice. Can mix and match different looks. Also, here's a tip. Keep your dry cleaning bags and slip each shirt into a bag after you fold it. Not only does it protect the shirt, uh, but the slippery surface of the bag helps reduce wrinkles. Uh, great video. So thanks, Swiss Gator. Uh, you know, this is the type of comment I absolutely love because, um, you know, I've got the ways that I've learned to travel over the years, but all of you have your own tips and tricks. Uh, many of you have probably spent uh, more time traveling than I have. And it's these little nuances that you learn and pick up over, you know, the years or decades of travel uh, that in the long run just really make traveling that much more pleasurable. You know, these little tips that prevent you from having to struggle with your luggage or to ensure, you know, that you've always got something you need or to help prevent your shirt from getting unnecessarily wrinkled uh, are the things that just, you know, really add grace and style back to travel. So thank you for sharing that. I mean, you're absolutely right. For six days of travel, uh, there's no question that you should be able to get away with three shirts. You know, preferably three white dress shirts is all you need. Uh, you can easily wear a white dress shirt two or three times, uh, iron it, you know, bring a spray bottle with you. Uh, I always keep one of these uh, in my travel bag, you know, for ironing. Uh, or also, if you're someone that uh, enjoys starching your shirts, you know, we have these small little Oxford and Wells uh, travel spray starch bottles that, you know, qualify under TSA compliance. So just pressing a shirt every day or every other day, as long as you don't don't have any stains, uh, you know, could allow you to just wear the same shirt for six days. Two suits, uh, you're absolutely right, two pairs of shoes uh, and a few ties, there's no question that you could make that work. So, uh, you know, yes, whenever I'm traveling to London, I probably take a little bit more than I should, but, you know, that's one of the reasons I enjoy going to London. And once again, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for their comments and questions. It's your engagement on our YouTube channel that make these Q&A videos possible. Not only does it give me an opportunity to answer in greater depth a lot of the questions that I'm already answering, but it allows me to take a moment just to acknowledge my appreciation for everyone's participation in this channel. If you haven't taken an opportunity to ask a question or make a comment, I invite you to do so. Even if you don't have any questions to ask, just sharing your opinion and thoughts about our content help us make better videos for you in the future. I read all those comments and questions personally and really do enjoy getting back to as many as possible. I'm Kirby Allison and thanks for joining us.